What is up everybody? My name is Chris and today we're talking about how you can improve your email open rate so that people don't treat your emails like this. Now before we dive straight into it, I just want to tell you a little bit about this channel. On this channel, we talk about everything to do with digital marketing. So if you want to get involved in the discussions and learn something along the way, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you'll be the first to know about all of my latest videos. So tip number one is to make sure you're testing different times for sending your emails. There's tons of different articles and studies available online that will tell you things like if you're in the B2B industry, then you need to be sending your emails on a Tuesday. Or if you're in the personal training niche, you need to be sending your emails on a Saturday evening. The reality is that while those studies were done, they were done with certain sample sizes. And every business, every consumer is different. So make sure you're testing times yourself. Start by testing, say, emails on a Monday morning. Compare that if you sent a similar email on a Friday evening. And eventually you'll start to see how different days and different times can really impact your open rates and you'll work out what works best for you and your business. So tip number two, if you can, ditch the info at or the sales at email addresses. I've worked with loads of different businesses and one thing that always works really well is if I can send emails from an individual's email account rather than just those generic company ones. The reason for this is that as you're scrolling through your inbox, the person who sent you that email is what pops out to you first before even the subject line. So if you see a name from a person that you know or somebody who maybe is a salesperson that you've spoken to recently, you're far more likely to have your eye drawn to that email than just a general email from their company. So a good way to think about it as well is think of your phone. If your phone is ringing and it is a colleague or an acquaintance, somebody you've at least had some sort of contact with, you're far more likely to answer that phone call than if you were just gonna see your phone ringing and it said withheld or it gave you just the name of a corporation that was ringing you. At the end of the day, people buy from people and that's where using a personal email address can be far more effective than if you're using a general company email address. So next up, one thing to think about in any form of marketing, whether that's an email or a Facebook ad, if you wanna have any kind of success, relevancy is key. You don't wanna be promoting things to people that aren't relevant to them and aren't of interest to them. So rather than just always going straight for an email blast to your entire database, just have a think about segmenting that database. You could segment according to demographics, so you could look at people's age, their gender, where they live. You could also look at things like their past purchases on your website, what PDFs have they downloaded, what pages have they visited while they've been on your website. All of this information is gonna build you up a sort of profile of the different groups within your database. So for example, if you've just launched a brand new microphone that you're selling on your website, you wouldn't necessarily want to just email that out to your entire email database because there's going to be a lot of people on there that maybe aren't in the market for a microphone. It's just not something that's interesting to them. However, if you were to segment your email database and you were able to look at people that have potentially bought cameras recently or they bought microphones from you in the past, those people are far more likely to be interested in an email about a new microphone. So everything's all about relevancy. Think that the more relevant something is to an audience, the far more likely they are to want to engage with it. So definitely segment your email databases where possible and send targeted emails to those people rather than just relying on a complete email blast. So tip number four is to avoid the spam filters. Essentially, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that if your email doesn't even hit the inbox and it gets lost in a spam filter somewhere, it's not gonna get opened. So that's a really important thing. Loads of different email providers treat emails differently and they look at spam differently. So just a few things to look out for. If your email constantly uses the word free in the subject, or if you have emails that have historically performed quite poorly, perhaps a lot of people in the past have reported them as spam or they've just not been opened. These are all little things that different email providers will look at as a ticking box for working out whether your email is spam or it's legitimate. So make sure you're paying attention to those things and you're doing everything you can to make sure you're not getting hit in a spam folder, but you're going straight straight into that person's inbox. So tip number five is a big one. You need to make sure that your subject lines are standing out and you're following through on any promises that you're making in them. So for example, 
if an email hits your inbox and it just says, here's a brand new product, click here to find out more, it doesn't sound very engaging. It's not catching someone's eye. It's not making them think, oh my God, I really need to open this email. What I like to do is implement a few different types of subject strategies and I'll talk you through those now and they'll hopefully give you a nice start towards thinking of how you can improve your subject lines to make sure they're standing out far more in the inbox. So the first tactic I like to employ is using FOMO, the fear of missing out. So what this does is it creates scarcity. It gives people some sort of feeling that if they don't open your email right now, they're really gonna miss out on something. So a great example here would be if you're doing a special offer. Rather than just sending an email that says, here's a special offer, it's 50% off my entire website. Send something that says, 50% off my entire website, valid for only 24 hours, act now. Really create that sense of urgency. And that's where FOMO can really be quite a useful tool when it comes to creating email subject lines. Another tactic I like to use is doing a value-led subject line. So what that essentially means is if you have a think about your products or just the email that it is you're sending at that specific moment in time, what value does somebody get from opening that email? Now, if you can't really think of what value they get from that, then you're probably sending an email that's just not worth it and I'd move on to the next idea. But if you do know what value they get from that, take that, put it in the subject line. So for example, maybe you're sending an email with some tips about how to save time in the kitchen. Put that benefit in the subject line. Talk about how if you open this email, these are 10 tips that are gonna save you time. You're giving that person what benefit they're gonna get out of opening that email, and they're gonna be far more likely to open it as a result. Now, the third tactic I like to use, is kind of flipping that value proposition completely on its head, and that is using pain points. So rather than talking about the value someone gets and putting that in the subject line, think about what their pains are. What are they struggling at the moment? What's causing them to suffer at the moment in certain parts of their lives and your email is gonna help solve that problem. Say for example, you're releasing a new power tool and this power tool is amazing because it reduces all of the strain on somebody's arms and their shoulders when they're using it. Take those pain points and put those in the subject line. Wave goodbye to arm and shoulder pain with this brand new tool. Those are the sorts of things that are gonna make somebody think, yeah, I've got quite a lot of shoulder pain recently from doing this task and this email is kind of resonating with me. Let me open it and find out more. Now, next up, you need to make sure you're A-B testing your subject lines. I've given you three different types of approaches you could have to email subject lines, but there is no set rule about when one will work better than the other. And like I said at the top of this video, every business and every audience is different. So what works well for me may not necessarily work well for you. And that's where it's really important to A-B test your subject lines. If you're doing a special offer, maybe try half of your database getting that FOMO focused subject line and the other half getting that value led subject line. You'll then be able to see which one performs better in terms of opens and that will allow you to then shape your future campaigns. You're learning something each time you're doing this A-B test. And if you have quite a large database, just even 1% different in the open rates can mean a lot more people opening your emails. So it really is important to test everything and work out a formula for what works best for you. So next up, don't forget the preview text. So certain email providers like Gmail, they will show you the subject line in bold and then next to that in a slightly grayed out font is like a piece of blurb and that is the preview text. It's really good real estate that you need to make sure you're using because somebody might read your subject line and they just might not quite be sold yet on opening your email. But then that additional bit of preview text can be used to really kind of have that second attempt at getting them to open that email. So don't forget about using the preview text. Make sure that you're filling that space out with something that complements your subject line and is really gonna reinforce to someone that they need to open your email. Next up, you need to create an email series that has people wanting to come back for more. So for example, on your website, you could have a small form and it says to people, give me your email address here and sign up to a four part email series that's gonna tell you how you can make the best possible YouTube videos. You've already got somebody who's invested in learning about that topic, so that's half the battle in terms of getting them to open any future emails you send. But what you need to be doing in that email series is hooking that person in in that first email to make sure they open that second email when it hits their inbox and doing the same in the second email for the third email and so on and so on. Now, a good way to look at this is I compare an email series to a TV series. 
So unless you were living under a rock, you've probably watched Game of Thrones. Now when you watch Game of Thrones, you get to the last two minutes of the show and they always do something epic. Like it really builds you up, you're excited, you're thinking, oh my gosh, what is gonna happen next? And then before you know it, bang, the credits hit and you have to sit there and you've got to wait until next week. But you've had such an amazing time in that whole episode and even more so in that final two minutes that you can bet you're gonna be the first in line as soon as that show starts next week to tune in. And you can do the same with your email series. You want to make it so that people read that email and then right at the end of that email, you have that cliffhanger, you have that thing that gives them that reason to want to come back next time. So they're gonna be looking out in their inbox and when that email hits, because they had such a great time in that first email and it really gave them that sort of cliffhanger that gave them the reason to want to open the second email, they're gonna be far more likely to open it. So make sure that in any email series you do that you're thinking of that cliffhanger and giving that person that reason to come back for the second email. So tip number nine is to make sure you're cleansing your database. Essentially, if you're sending emails to an outdated database where there's loads of hard bounces, people reporting your emails as spam or just general unengaged contacts that aren't interested in you anymore, that's going to have a really negative impact on your open rate. So make sure you're going into your email database at least twice a year and just cleansing your database, getting rid of people that have had emails bounce from them or people that just haven't engaged with your last few emails. And just by sifting out all of that rubbish, you're going to be left with a much cleaner database of people that are actually interested interested in what you have to say and overnight you will see your open rates increase just as a result of having a cleaner database. And another thing to look out for is that certain email providers offer you the opportunity to not send your emails to unengaged contacts. Essentially, if somebody's not engaged with your last three, four or five emails, they're gonna be far less likely to engage with future emails. So it's worth ticking that box just to make sure that certain emails don't go to them and that's gonna help you increase your open rates again because you're sending your email to a targeted list of people that do wanna hear from you. At the same time, don't just leave those unengaged contacts. Think about doing some sort of email series where you re-engage those contacts and bring them back to you so that you can start sending future emails to them again. And my last tip for you here is an important one. You need to not just rest on your success. So if you have a 50% open rate, that's really good. But how are you gonna turn that into 55%, 60% and beyond? There's always something you can do to improve. So test your subject lines, test your segmentation of your database. Essentially, there's no perfect formula. Just as you keep testing, you're gonna learn more and you're gonna see your results improve as a result. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you liked what you saw. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time.